What's up? It's your girl, Shay Noor. I'm chilling at the real home of hip hop with Mike Powers. What's poppin' is your boy, Mike Powers. As you may have heard, yeah, it's Lord Mob. I'm still unfiltered. It's still Powers and the congregation said, amen. Now hit the lights. Let's get into this shit right now. For my real hip hop heads only. I have come to you today with the express intent of exposing you to something very beautiful and I think very important. I find that I can no longer urge you towards this light in a manner that most would consider to be subtle. That time is over. The current situation calls for, and this is on you, prioritize expediency. In other words, wake your ass up, nigga. Put on your school clothes and don't try to walk out of here without no lotion on your crusty ass. The reckoning has been upon us for some time, yet we stood bewildered searching for answers when the man on the left side of your screen was 10 toes in the town square holding the sacred psalms in his clutch. And you shuffle past him as though he was invisible, happily awash in nihilism. But now I'm about to give y'all motherfuckers something to pay some mind to, to nourish you with the essence of one of Rochester's most insanely gifted MCs, that your soul might be redeemed if you walk in the light of what this good brother done brought forth. Be bathed in the very truth of the struggle while struggling to find truth. That's what this is. It is this man who talks not ill of his detractors nor engorges himself on the spoils of his own accomplishments, but instead unconditionally devotes his gifts to us. Indeed, to bring clarity to the incoherent and joy to the ears of us who continue to uphold this form at its foundation. We gave birth to the canvas he now paints upon. And through his hands, the entirety of our story can be told for this job. He can certainly be trusted. I proclaim this in all seriousness. Give this man his respect. Y'all didn't know it, but he already earned it. Now let's fill in the blanks after I say that it gives me great pleasure for the first time on the Mike Power Show to introduce you to a man I have deemed the Marvin Gaye of hip hop, the conscious of Rochester, New York, and the premier author of one of 2020's most astounding releases. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and the only street justice is in the building. Peace, peace. Tell them, tell them, Mike. That was supposed to go past the camera. It did not. But we in the <laughs> building. Yo, I think I worked my way up into a lather. I had to say it the way I said it because I don't feel like enough people is paying attention. I wanted to get you a few months ago. I got caught up, but timing is everything. So I'm glad now that after this album drop and people had a little bit of time to digest what's going on, if motherfuckers is still sleeping, we here to bring the truth to them. Street Justice, thank you for blessing this platform with your presence, sir. Thank you. My pleasure, bro. Let's get right on into it. How does it feel to be at the center of two movements? Trust is on fire, uh, and the lyrical shit is having a resurgence. How does that feel for you? It felt good, man. It felt good to still get motivated. It felt good to, to see that people ready to listen to something real people paying attention to life a little bit more. It's a, it's a non-stop. We just killing each other non-stop, non-stop. Nobody trying to look at what's going on, self-evaluate, you know? And so I'm trying to, I'm trying to play my part, you know? Talk to the people, give them that real feel, you know? Certainly. I love, I love what's going on out here. I love Griselda, what they doing, how they brought, you know, things to the forefront, kept going, stay true to what they do. And my bro, 38 Special, been doing that forever, forever. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they even lit a fire up under him, you know? Because, you know, dudes was out here in these streets making it happen how they had to. Because it, it wasn't, you know, monetizing wasn't coming real good for the 
independent artists who, you know, it was hard to figure out how to make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's always been that talent, always been a hunger, but it's like the outlets and, you know, and the know-how wasn't, it's not always there, you know? Right. Um, people, you know, definitely. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask you why, why the name street justice, because you, you're very uh, uplifting cat, but where I come from street justice is the ugliest form of justice. Um, so why 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 do you choose the name Street Justice? It's for that as well. <laughs> okay, I think and anybody Actually, hey. to, to this channel can understand everything you just said, right? <laughs> Listen, I, Mike. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm I'm a street dude for real, for real, for real. But in the in the sense of you adapt to your environment, you adapt to to life, you know. I'm not, I'm, street justice is definitely, we ain't calling the police, we gonna handle things accordingly, you know? And that's how it's supposed to be. Honestly, it's supposed to be that way. But at the same time, I'm here to bring justice to the streets. You know, I'm here to talk to the people. Yeah. Cause we ain't getting justice in, in, in no government from the government. So it's about, like I said, self-evaluation. It's about getting your mind right. And that's, that's what I'm about bringing justice to the streets. And at the same time, I don't play. So all that tough guy shit, I'm, I, I'm with that too. Don't get it twisted. Yes, sir. Thank you. And so, so should, I, should I be calling you Mr. Justice right now? <laughs> get <a, laughs> Let's get it, man. <laughs> hey, I believe Honor and Glory was the first single off the album. Um, phenomenal single. It's all uppercuts. Honor and glory. Uh, you sound like a father to hip hop out there giving us real advice. How do you see your mission in this sport as you expound upon um, those things that you talked about that trouble the community? What, 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 where do you position yourself in all of this? I'm like a, uh, I'm like a counselor, bro. I just want to talk to the youth, man. That's it. I want to talk to my people. Yeah. I want to talk to the people that's lost, including myself. I got to keep talking to myself. Mm. motivating myself, staying focused myself, and be an example. I'm here to just to wake them up, let them know they're kings, let them know all the things that y'all glorifying and y'all looking at, understand that's life, that's all we see when we come outside, but you got to understand this ain't it. This can't be it, you know, because it's just depression and, you know, you're not motivated to do nothing you, and you, you, you're down. You feel like you're, you're lost and you're never going to make nothing. So it's just to strengthen, your, strengthen, strengthen the mind, strengthen the spirit. That's what I'm focused on. I'm not focused on no talent show. I'm not focused on being popular. I don't care who the most popping. I don't care if I got 20 million followers on IG and none of that. You know, I'm here to reach the ones who are ready to listen and ready to wake up and change a, the way they think and everything. So, you know, we dying left and right. We the strongest, we the smartest, we the illest. We, we got all the potential in the world, nothing moves without us doing what we do. No matter what form of fashion you look at it in life, we run this thing. I'm talking about melanated people, but we seem we the most lost at the same time. We hate our, ourselves for some strange reason. So I'm just trying to get to the soul. So when you talk about talking that real talk, I give. I'm gonna give you the realest talk. Period. I don't care. You can talk that tough talk all you want, but when I talk. It's going to touch the soul. I don't care if you not in the mood to hear it. You're going to listen. You're going to hear what I got to say. Absolutely. And I, and I heard it all. Uh, I don't know if this is a, a comment that's in my notes or not, but before I forget, um, I was going to post it on IG last night, but I was working on something else. I didn't get to post it. You don't take no bars off. Not a one. We're going to get to that in a minute though. Um, if you're watching this video, you're not familiar with Street Justice, let me just say this right now. First of all, subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button right now, okay? After this video, go check out the album Community Service. Incredible project. Go look at the video for Honor and Glory. While we're talking about the video, the video nice as hell. Part of the video looks like a family barbecue. What was the vibe like that day during that video? Uh, that was a beautiful day, man. That was actually uh, my bro Spash daughter birthday. So, so what we said, we know that that good vibe was going to be there. That good energy was going to be mm. outside, you know. And mind you, uh, rest in peace to a brother who just passed. Somebody was literally just killed in, in, in that park, not even maybe a week earlier. So, mm. honestly, it was hard to get my people to even come out and 
to it. They didn't even want to be around that. You know, it's like, you're like, man, we ain't trying to be up there, man. Niggas get killed up there. And I'm like, yo, man, I'm going to do what, what God set forth. If this is where I'm supposed to be at and this is supposed to be going on, this is what we're doing. You're going, let's, 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 let's work. The vibe was beautiful, bro. The people who showed up was supposed to, they showed up and it was beautiful. Just all around the board, man. <laughs> the kids having fun. Great food out there. Great vibe. Of course, some good drinks. Y'all seen it. We was just vibing, man. Enjoying life. That that you know. It's such a you beautiful take video. Take the with the bad, man. Great, great, great. It's beautiful. Uh, I believe Special is wearing a shirt that costs more than my house in that video. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Cause was he aggy about cats kicking dust on that joint, or was he acting extra when he put that shirt on? Was that a Versace? Listen, man. Yes, it was, man. <laughs> It was his daughter's birthday, man. He came looking like a king like he supposed to. You know oh, what I mean? No doubt about it. You feel me? Ain't nobody touching Smash, man. <laughs> ain't nobody put no dust on it. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody put no dust on nothing, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, um, whose idea was it to have your face covered with an American flag and to have you in a prison jumpsuit? And what's the message there? So, are we talk about the album cover now. Yes. The album cover... It was more than I, I could even fathom myself because that's along the lines that I wanted it like that. But Spashman, he's a visionary, bro. He, 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 you know, we spoke on things about it, and he went to a, to an artist he dealt with, and he threw these thoughts in his head about what type of time I'm on, and the artist came back with that beautiful portrait, man. Um, so look. The transition from rhyming about the conditions in the hood to storytelling is seamless on your projects. Uh, I'm going to guess that you respect Slick Rick, who is regarded as the best storyteller ever. But does some of that ability and need to hand down these lessons come from somebody in your family? It just come from, it come from me, bro. It come from me. It come from what I've been through. It come from what I see. It come from... Life, period, man. Mm -hmm. And of course, Slick Rick, one of my favorite storytellers ever. Nas as well. Mm. Biggie as well. Mm. Ray Raekwon, Ghost, you know, it's different, different people. But yes. the beat special gave me, it's like, I, I find myself fighting not to sound like I'm glorifying this street shit. So I have to find my way to still give people that street feel, but still give them that conscious real talk that I want to do. So I had to find that perfect balance. And for me, the, and the best thing I felt was to just give stories of these street, the street tales and show them the end results of this shit. So you still get a street feel, but I'm showing you this is this is not what it is. Y'all heard what he broke down the science, so let me say loud and clear, the man on the left side of your screen is one of the best MCs I have ever heard in my entire life. Appreciate that, hey, you got some incredibly in-depth stories on there. Only thing missing is names and addresses. How many of these <laughs> stories are real and how, how much of it is you taking bits and pieces of events to weave together a narrative? Everything is real. Every story I said is real. Some people I know firsthand, some people I don't. But everything, even if it's not somebody I know, it's somebody you know. That's the mm -hmm. thing about this, mm -hmm. this, this music and these stories it's going to hit home regardless because everybody knows somebody who that happened to. We, <laughs> the other day I was at my man's house. He was like, yo, that's the same shit that happened to I'm going to put a name on that such and such. I'm like, yeah, like, it is what it is. This happens. We live the same way. We do the same shit in every hood. It's not hard to put that story to somebody. You know what I mean? Oh, I, absolutely. And um, I gather you were actually behind the walls at some point. Yeah, several times, man. Okay. All right. And this last time, uh, how long have you been free? I've been out since 2016. Okay, cool. And, you know, I, we know that, you know, coming back from incarceration, it's a struggle. You know, we, we, you're looking to find your way out there. Um, you know, bread is not readily available right when you come out the joint. You know, the, the support systems. You used to have certain friends. 
they go by the wayside. Nobody wrote you a letter. They didn't holler at you. Or maybe some people still involved in some other stuff that you don't want to be involved in. How that transition back into, you know, real life, how has that been for you since 2016? It's been a struggle for the simple fact that I never, uh, I was a lost nigga too, period. I never uh, researched and looked into the things that I was real adamant about doing. I never liked this music thing. I never seen it could actually happen. All we ever thought about was a record deal, a record deal, big companies signing us. We never have that in these small cities where we at. So I never looked at that as a possibility. I always had these skills and this and the ability to talk to talk what I want to speak, you know, but I, I never knew how to make it happen. So with that being said, all I ever did was hit these streets and sell drugs, honestly. So me coming home, that's all I ever knew. But it's like a catch-22 because I'm totally against it. I started feeling like a total demon. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, I'm totally against it, but then I'm still falling in the same trap because this is the only way I know how to make good money. You know what I mean? So it's been, a, it's been, a, it's been difficult transitioning. I don't like working nine to fives. Even when I have, it feels like I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be, all I'm doing is writing songs on breaks. All I'm doing is rapping in my head. It's like, what the fuck? I gotta do something else. You know what I mean? This ain't, this ain't how I'm supposed to be living. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's hard. And that shit ain't making, it, making the bills pay. I'm used to living a certain way. I'm used to buying what I want, moving how I want, not depending on nobody for nothing, you know? So. And when I X out selling drugs, it's like, damn, what, we got to make something happen. Luckily, I don't have this ego where I feel like I got to keep up with the Joneses or prove something to somebody. So I'm able to just fall back and now research and get this independent mindset and learn how to do things and take my time and build a, plat a platform and get a little fan base that's going to rock with me and hear me out, you know, and, and able to live, if not comfortably, at least good enough where I ain't got to worry about these bills being paid and clothes on my back. You know what I mean? You said on your IG page, I forget what the post was, but the caption on it was just those words, hear me, hear me out. That's important to you. Yes. Yes. I need to be heard. It's a balance that's needed. And I feel like I could definitely fill a void that's that's missing in here. A salute lot of people they talk. A, me. Yeah, salute to you yeah. as, a, as as a black man for for coming out on the other side and 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 doing it the hard way because we know what the trick is. They want us they want us to fall back into those traps. They want to put us. They want to give us that number again. You know what I mean? They want to make us you know basically slaves to the government. You know when you're getting paid like. 30 cents a day or something like that with the work that people get in prison. That's what they want. So we can make they, they Bob Barker draws or whatever the hell, you know what I mean? So that we could buy they um, shebang chips and all that other kind of shit that they be, you know what I mean? The fresh leaves and all that. Other. It's an industry to put people like me and you in the joint, you know, so they could, it's, you know, prison industrial complex is a real thing. So salute to you for, for being strong enough to, to fight through this, to, to, to walk it uphill and to go against the grain and not fall back into that, bro. We want to see you free. Um, I want to move on to my next question, um, but thank you for sharing that with us. How, um, oh, I'm not going to uh, ask you how old you are, but I'll ask if you ever been hit with a switch. Rephrase that. What you mean by that? You know what a switch, when they take the, when when grandmama make you go get the, um, the, the twig <laughs> off the tree. You know nah, I mean? bro. I grew up on extension cords and, uh. Oh, you younger Kings, than me. Because I'm talking, I'm narrowing Kings it down. Shit like that. Did you ever want to be Steve Austin? <laughs> Who the fuck is that? Nah, man. Nah. <laughs> nah, brother. What, yeah. What's going okay. on? Man? You know, you know, you know, you, you never watched the Bionic <laughs> Man, Steve Austin? Nah. You young. Okay, yeah. you young. All right, good. We narrowed it down. People nah, I'm, not, I'm not young. I ain't going to hold you. I ain't going to hold you. I ain't young. Oh, no. I'm old, enough. Enough, to, I'm, I'm old enough to know better, though. You know? Okay. All right, that's. that's uh, a, um, did you go to your junior high school dance? Nah, man, I got kicked out. In junior high. That's middle school, you mean? Yeah. Nah, nah. Wow, you got kicked out. What you get kicked out for? 
out of uh, I got kicked out of high school for everything, everything, <laughs> fighting, moving shit, smoking, not cussing nah, yeah, people all out, that, all that. Yeah, like a store at lunchtime, everything. I was doing everything. Somebody got punched in the face on GP. You know what I mean, oh, of course, I was just bullying the bullies, all that. Okay, all right. Um, you have a song called Overthrow where you make mention of the fact that we have the power to overthrow the government. Do you hesitate at all with such a controversial course? No. That shows strength. I'm strong. I'm fearless. And I'm going to say what I want to say. We're going to live and die regardless. I'm going to say exactly what I want to say, bro. I'm telling you, any song you hear me with anybody on it, I don't care how tough they talking, when my verse come, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna say exactly what I want to say. Mm. You can love that man verse as much as you want, but I guarantee you feel exactly what I got to say. I'm gonna say what I want to say, bro. The real enemy is the government, man. You understand me? Mm. I don't have no ops in these streets. Everybody who feel like they got an op out here, they just lost, bro. Ain't nobody who in the same struggle in the same predicament I'm in can possibly be my op, man. We just live amongst each other and we fight and it's easy. It's that it's easy enough to take our anger out on each other because we around each other. When in actuality, bro, we just need to be building them with each other. Is that part Period. and parcel of how we do as just people in general across the spectrum, regardless of race, right? So a lot of times you'll have a family member, right? And you, you, you're so comfortable with your family member that you kind of do them in the old kind of way. When somebody new come around, you give that new person the different kind of respect. You know what I mean? That's, that's so crazy, bro. And that's the truth, man. That's sad. It's sad, but that's what, that's how people's mindset is, too. I don't get it. I get it, but I don't, I don't understand how people could live like that. I'm not into none of that. Yeah. Um, people talk about Spech got punchlines, and he does. I call Spesh the punchline king. But, yo, you drop punches damn near every line, too. Your approach to it is way more subtle, though. Uh, please mm -hmm. tell me the process of how you became so sharp with the punches. Yo, let me salute you, bro. Do you know it's like a lot of people don't even realize I punch? Because it's just, it's like I'm just having a conversation. And you it's just pour, it's like you pouring water in people's ear, bro. And it's like, I'm, when I more I listen, I'm like, these is all punchlines. Every last line is the punchline. So I'm going to let you go ahead and elaborate. Yeah. It's a thing I do. It's like I, uh, I challenge myself. I've been rapping so long, bro, that it, you be having to find the, find the you know, motivation to do it, first of all. And then when I do it, the e it's so easy like to, to talk tough and that's not what I want to do. So I have to find a way to talk how I want to talk to the people and still show skill with it. So, cause I know a lot of underground heads, they want to hear them punchlines, they want the metaphors. And I'm just about, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is talk to you and, <laughs> and, and get your mind on some, looking at life different shit. But at the same time, I want to give you what you want as well. So for those who are looking for it, they're going to catch it, you know? So I try to find a way to make a punchline out of this real life shit. That's just my thing. Some will get it, some won't. Sometimes I'll just be like, yo, bro, I'll talk to my man. It's like, yo, I'm, do, you, do you know what I just did right here? What I said was this, this, that means this still. I know you hear, hear, hear I'm making a point, but don't miss, I just made that a punchline, bro. Like it's scaled to this shit, you know, but a lot of people sleep on that. Yeah. Well, we go, we go, we they, go. They, they get it. We're going to wake up. That's why the intro is the way the intro was because people need to fucking wake up. Again, when I say one of the most astounding releases of 2020, I don't say that with hyperbole. I mean, this shit could easily make your top 10. Rasheed Chappelle had his oh top list of all. The, the albums of 2020 street justice community service was at the very top of Rashid Chappelle's list. Listen, y'all better go tap into this album right now. Don't say I didn't fucking tell you. I got the truth on the screen right here. That's what we do over here. Um, on let don't let me shout him out, please, please let yeah. me shout him out. Cause I, I, 
that's my man. I, I always, you know, salute him. Always check for what he's doing. And I'm always there if he, if he call me at any time to do anything. And I never, I didn't see that list. You know, I know he rocks with me heavy, but I didn't even see that list. So I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, for real. I saw that this morning. And, you know, Rasheed Chappelle, I don't, I never, I'm never friends with rappers. I never try to be friends with, that's not my concern. It's not what I do here. Rasheed is one of them dudes that when I talked to him, I was like, man, I could be friends with that dude just because, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be friends with him because I'm trying to do my business, but he's <laughs> such an engaging guy, right? He's such, he's such a positive guy, right? When genuine, you go around him. Genuine spirit. Yes. Genuine spirit. Yes. Very yes. intelligent. You know what I mean? And and just goes about his business. And those, these are the kind of guys I root for. You know what I mean? I don't mind if people is arrogant and it's hip hop. Do your thing. But when we got right. scientists like a guy like you, a guy like Rashid, that's more humble, and they still delivering them darts, I'm with that too. Sometimes y'all are not saying out loud, "Hey, yo, look over here." I get it. I'm gonna say this shit though. I'm gonna say it. Y'all need to look over here. On on a song called "Don't Believe Them," you said, "Know your op because they will pop your mailbox." Or link with a thought and try to rob your nail shop. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that. Yo, <laughs> yo, I'm gonna say it again. He said, "Know your op, because they will pop your mailbox <laughs> and link with a thought and try to rob your nail shop." Um, he said, "Your man box, but can't block a headshot when lead pop niggas will get knocked and tell cops." Um, and you got a crazy Eto verse on there. Shout to Eto. Uh, how important is Etho to the upstate momentum right now? Man, Etho is a staple in this thing. A lot of people just getting on to what we're doing. Etho been doing this shit forever, bro. Forever, bro. I'm talking about early 90s, man. Mm. Etho, he's a king. He's a king. And he and he a workaholic. He lived this hip-hop shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When Even when even when we didn't see an outlet for it, Etho was on it. On it, on it, on it. Working, working, working. That man is sharp, very sharp. And I appreciate Ito. And he needed to send me them beats. I don't hit you a hundred times. What up? <laughs> Ito. Can the man get his beats? You this guy? You got Ito. You got this guy? He got a bang on you more than one time for the beats? Man. I'm just playing E. It ain't my business. I ain't the boss. Please get this man some beats, E. Um, pull up, E. <laughs> I know it's a lot of violence up there. Uh did did you see um that murder on, on live TV last week? Because uh, I know it's a... Oh. You didn't catch that? I'm talking about, I'm talking about Nate Robinson. I'm talking about Nate Robinson. Of course, bro. <laughs> we need some milk. I appreciate that one bit. <laughs> Nate crazy, first of all. He ain't never had a fight. I could tell. Never, dog. Never. You can see that. <laughs> Yo, so... When he got, when he took the punch, I thought, I thought it was behind the head. Some people say it wasn't behind, whatever. When he took that first ball and he went down, was you like, you was like me, like, yo, okay, let's go. <laughs> I was like, no, he need to just throw the towel in because I see what's about to happen. On the I'm telling my man, like, oh, he about to get knocked out, bro. I'm telling my man, he about to get knocked out right now. They like, you crazy. I'm like, <laughs> five seconds later, oh, my God. <laughs> hey, he let his face landed on the canvas. Not me, and um, and and oh, here's the other thing. Where's where? So um, do you feel like me? Because I feel like after watching that fight, I could easily take Jake Paul in a fight. Do you feel like that? Man, I smoke Jake Paul. I knock him out and step on his head just for that Nate shit. I don't like that. I don't like it either. I'm heavy heavyweight. I'm a, I'm, I'm a super heavyweight. He don't want no problems with me. Right, right. And I don't even think they do. Do they even do super heavyweights? That's still a division for like, like it's just all heavyweight now. So you could be two twenty or you could be three fifty. You know I mean, that's, it's yeah. all, that's, they used to have light heavy. Yeah. They used to have heavy. They used to have um super heavy. You know what I mean, and you you could tell. Look how Tyson and uh, Roy looked at, together. Yeah, Tyson ain't look like no heavyweight like that, like that. You nah. know what I mean? Listen, I, 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 there was a couple times Tyson could have knocked him out. Like, right, he wasn't setting him up for it. Mm-hmm. Sidestep, and he had mm-hmm. him open. Man, he could have. That I told my girl. I said, usually back because she didn't watch Tyson back in the. Day. I said back in the day, that's when Tyson would have threw that, and you'd be out of here. You know what I mean? And even when he when he when Gosh. he pulled it, even when he went to the body, he was pulling mm-hmm. the punches because he could have folded Roy. 
Roy was running. You seen that? Roy did not want none of that. <laughs> Even after the it shit, was, Roy was dead. <laughs> you seen it, right? He couldn't <laughs> breathe. Them lungs was hurting. The ribs was terrible. Hey, a lot of niggas on the street too. This is, this is street fighting niggas. A lot. Of, it, it, it looked like the movies. Listen, a nice fake up top. Go to the rib cage. Come right back up top. I mean, look, listen. Body shots. Body shots. Uh, <laughs> you know when Roy used to rap on the body yeah, head. I must have forgot. Can't yeah, be yeah, stopped. Yeah, yeah. Can't that joint right there. You gotta you gotta go watch that video. It was actually a pretty good video. Um, let me stop. Uh. Can you really wait? Can you really trust a nigga that never ate a syrup sandwich? <laughs> you know that's a it's, a it's a generation thing. He might have missed it. He might don't understand what that is. You know, you fuck with you you fuck with the syrup sandwiches before though, right? Of course, that's okay. all that was in the house a couple times. You know that, dude. I ate three last night. I shared one with my dog. You know what I mean, but I put some honey oh on that God. joint. Old time sake shit. <laughs> hey, you it's follow, like okay, okay. <laughs> listen, you follow, you, you follow codes though. <laughs> I, I you got codes of the old tradition. I, I got to, I got to. Um, and if you don't have no pastries in your house with those that's watching at home, um, yeah, take a whole bunch of syrup and put it on, on, on some bread, make a sandwich, and bite into that. See if it don't taste like a pastry. It really do. Um, there seems to be tons of unity between all the artists in this movement right now. From from someone who's been behind the scenes a while, is that perception true or is that unity all smoke and mirrors? Uh, I say it's way more unity than smoke and mirrors. Good. Good. There's a, there's little discrepancies here and there about bullshit mm -hmm. that I'm not into, so I don't even comment on it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's politics with this underground shit too, Mike. Yeah, and it's crazy. <laughs> it is what it is, bro. Life is politics, and I tell people when they go to a job because I had to learn this the hard way. Any job you go to, and not that hip hop is a job, but any job you go to, your first job is to learn the culture. What's going on in there? Who makes shit shake? You know what I mean? Who got a funky attitude? Who talk too goddamn much? You know what I mean? Or every whatever job you go to, you have to learn what those politics is because you'll find out too late. Like you dog this dude out, and then you'll find out three weeks later that dude is real cool with the boss. Right? Yeah. Shit like that. So yeah, hip hop got them politics too. And I I'm glad to see that it has it on our side and our movement and our resurgence escalated to the point that one guy is trying to shoot another guy over some beef shit. Uh, you know, hats hat should be taken off. Um, hats should be tipped to all these MCs out there. It's a it's a ton of them doing a lot of work on the mic. Everybody competing right. for the top spot. Everybody's aggressive. It's hip hop. Alpha males all over the place. No beef between artists to the point where I'm, I'm about to beat your ass or I'm about to shoot you. So hats off to that. And and we've been doing this for a few years now. This, this new research has been going on with none of this violence popping off. Other genres of music is having their problems um, with people beefing with each other and murdering each other. So um, knock on wood, that don't happen to the, to the lyricism over here. Um, what was the best piece of advice someone from your family gave you? Um, my cousin Marlon told me, just do what I do. Don't worry about nothing else. Period. Mm. And how do you see this run you're on right now? Is, is this a, a do or die situation for you right now? Nah, it's a do till I die. How about that? Got you. I got a duty. I got some, I got, I got things that I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be doing. Like I said, I just want to play my part, talk to the people, and that's what I'm going to do till I die. So the song Long Live is, is so beautiful. You killed it. Uh, when you listen to it back, what does that song do to you? Mike, you just had to bring this song up. Let me tell you the story about this song, Mike. Okay. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we in Rochester, New York, we had the Trust Studio. And I met this young lady for the first time named Shay Noah, right? Mm. So I walk in the studio 
I immediately start fucking with her. I immediately, she never, mind you, she never met me. Mm-hmm. So I walk in, I'm like, oh, what up? Oh, you can't respond to my Facebook uh, request? I'm like, I got, I'm like, yo, <laughs> I'm just spazzing, right? I'm like, oh, you too good to respond to me? I hit you in your inbox, you ain't gonna talk back? She's looking at me like, I don't, who is it? I don't even know you. What you, what you, I'm like, yo, I'm street justice. I'm like, oh, what's good? I'm like, listen, man. <laughs> You, you, I'm like, I love you. You like, you like, you like the female me. You out here, you know. I'm just talking about, talking about. I'm like, I'm like, now nah, I'm fucking with you. But um, how you doing? Pleased to meet you. Yo, I heard your joint. I heard, I hear what you're working on. You, you crazy. You motivated me. You know what I mean? She's like my, one of my biggest motivators, for real, for real, for real. Like, mm. so anyway, special laughing. You know, special laughing. Special know me. Yep. Special is rolling because he know he know I'll just be on my on my shit. Get people comfortable. Cause I don't like sitting around everybody quiet and no like you know I just come in just I give it up fuck it so boom he turns this beat on that beautiful beat right special so mm-hmm. I'm like I'm like oh I'm more on that he like yeah he, special like yeah right right to that Shay so we all in there it's me Shay uh, her cousin I think uh, and a few other trust brothers maybe uh, Philly um, I've we in there just mobbing boom. So I'm still talking my shit. I'm like, I'm about to smoke you, Shay. Right? <laughs> I'm still fucking with Shay. No, I'm like, yeah, I'm about to smoke you on this. You want here with me? I'm about to smoke you. So everybody like, talk that shit, just talk that shit, just. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So boom, I'm, I'm, I'm in my zone. I'm walking up and down the hallway. So boom, we get done. She go in the booth. She spit. She do her verse. She come out. Everybody looks at me. They like, what up, just? Go in there and smoke her. I'm like, uh... <laughs> First of all, I was just playing, right? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know, I got, I don't know if I brought that out of her. I don't think I did because it was just a beautiful verse. She was just talking how, how she felt like yeah. shit, I'm on. I'm like, I'm like, damn. Now, let me tell you, when I went in there, oh, Black Jesus in there too, boom. I go in there, I lay my verse. Everybody love it, right? Long story short, it was all good. It was all good. I'm like, day, day over. So maybe eight months later, we in Jersey now. She drops it on, on her on her album, um, Juno. It comes out. I come to the studio, but before they mix and master that song, I, I said I wanna read, I wanna do a different verse. I said I wanna change my verse, bro. I changed my verse. I, I never in my life changed this. a verse ever. Let, let me, I'm telling you firsthand. I listen to the song back and I'm like, everybody like, just you bugging, man. Your verse is dope. You bugging. You. I'm like, listen, man, it's cool, but I just want to do something else to that, man. Shay smoked me. I'm like, I'm like, Shay smoked me, man. I'm like, man, let me do another verse. Special laughing, like, bro, you bugging, bro. You know, he went downstairs like, man, I ain't recording this shit. <laughs> yo! <laughs> so I, had to, <laughs> I had the engineer. I'm like, yo, man, plug me. I'm about to, let me do my verse over. I did the verse over. It came out nice. So then, fast forward to my project. Um, we we done with it. Special like man, we about to drop. Let's let's drop, bro. Fuck all that. But he yeah. like, yo, man. But this mother this motherfucker joint right here that you ain't you ain't. I'm using this verse, bro. I'm putting this on the end. I'm like, nah, bro. Don't do that, man. He like, yo, why you don't like this verse? I'm like, it's cool, but that song is done. It's on Juno. It's, it's, it's I, I I switched my verse. So I'm like, damn, now, I'm like, fuck it. He put it out, and it turns out to be one of people's favorite joints. And I'm like, because I'm my biggest critic all the time. I'm always like that with my music, bro. Yeah. I, it's a good verse. It is a good verse. But it was just something about how it went down. I didn't really want to even, I was going to use the verse for something else, because like I said, on that same beat, I did a different verse. I didn't want to use that verse to that on that same beat again but it turned out good you know because it's different listeners who never even heard that song on juno at the same time so it was like it's re, it's re, I mean, it's bringing it that should touch my heart that's why i had to ask you what does it do for you because it the whole entire thing brought a crazy feeling to me you know what i mean um you know people know me i don't i hate to even talk about it because they like how many times i think you're going to talk about it but you know i didn't cry on my show like probably five or six times because sometimes the music could do that to me so sometimes i cry about other shit but sometimes i will play a song like even on live 
I'll play it. It'll touch me, and I would just start crying. So I think I was this close with that song. It just it got it had a feeling to it. So I just wanted to. I did want to know, like, did you did is it, does it do that to you when you listen to it back? Yeah. Now that I got off of that, see, that was the backstory of how the song came about. Yeah. And how that verse, I took that verse off. And that's that crazy. Verse. Yeah, that was a great. Thank you for sharing that story, though. Inside shit. This is this is how L Shay is, because I was just like I said, I was just. You know, Special came grab me like, bro, let's work. Let's get back to this work, man. Do what you do. And I was kind of rusty. I, I really kind of felt, I, I feel like I was where I wanted to be yet. So when Shay came in and smoked it like that, she gave me that feel of where I'm supposed to be. Like, mm. even though to me, I couldn't really, I didn't really intake my, what I put down. Like other people did. They loved it, what I did. But, you know, but what that verse, where that verse came from is, I really know niggas out here who body niggas and still out here, hmm. first of all. And niggas be like, yo, this nigga still running around here and this nigga ain't dead yet? Like, you know, shit like that. And I really know niggas who really out here fronting and ain't taking care of their kids and, and you know, it all comes from life. It's all life. That's just my, that's my style. My style is life, hmm. period. And your voice is so unassuming, but at the same time, it's unforgettable. Um, what is the awareness to tune your voice properly to tell your story and the story of the struggle in the hood so beautifully come from? I be having an issue with my voice because I don't like screaming. I just like to talk. And, you know, it depends on, you know, especially telling me at some time, like, yo, bro, give more energy or critique me. You know, it takes brothers like special to do that because I'm so comfortable in, 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 in what I'm saying that I'm not looking at other aspects. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you need that around you, you know, to bring that, the, the, the full power of what you're trying to do, bring it all the way out, you know? I think it'll be interesting to hear you be a little bit more aggressive, but at the same time, I really appreciate your voice. It's different. You know, the words are very impactful and then the way they come across, because like I said, your voice is so unassuming. I think it's something that we're not really used to seeing. It's a little bit reminiscent to me of how Rakim was different than everybody else. How everybody was like, who and all the other kind of stuff and real aggressive. And he came and talked that talk from a very comfortable, confident, quiet, confident place. Right. That's where I'm at with it. I'm just, you know, in my whole style, period. I want to. I don't want to sound like nobody. I don't want nobody to compare me and say I sound like nobody. Like when I look in these comments, they people always have a thing with trying to compare you to something else. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. But I don't rap like nobody. I you really don't. don't. You really don't. And people, that's and I pride myself on that. I punch different. I set my lines up different. My whole flow will be totally different. I try to find a different way to. to I don't want to use the same setup flow at all. Listen, if y'all come into my live you know, or any place else and I see y'all, I might just start randomly asking y'all, did y'all check the new Street Justice album? If somebody say, no, don't fucking talk to me no more. Don't be in my chat. I'm, I'm being dead serious right now. Don't be in my chat. If I ask you, you say, hey, Mike Powell, what's going on? If I say, yo, you listen to the new Street uh, Justice album and you say, nah, me and you, we not talking until you listen to that album. That's where we at with it. Because um, I believe in a project so much. And I just don't think enough people is talking about it. And I'm glad Rasheed said something about it because it lets me know, again, my ears are not broke. If you ain't listened to this album, your ears might be. Um, with that tone, though, how can a nigga know if you angry? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is it a look? I ain't looking to be angry. It's all about, oh, you talking about me personally in real life? Yeah, yeah. Bro, it ain't hard to tell. My energy is what it is, bro. <laughs> that's just one of my fun questions. But you got like a voice that's like, it's like you never seem to get hype or like you never yelling at nobody. I, I feel yeah. like when you is mad at somebody, the, the room might get a little bit icy. I think everybody probably know what's going on. Um, yeah, that's a fact, bro. I ask you this because you and your music seem so heavy and serious. Honestly, do you get to smile often? Um, it might sound corny, but are you happy? Not happy at all, Mike. That's why I rap how I rap. 
Not happy at all, bro. How can how can you be happy? I wouldn't be happy with a hundred million, bro. Mm. My happiness comes from my family being happy. My happiness will come from me seeing my my environment, you know, uplifted. My happiness will come from walking the corner stores and seeing melanated people owning these motherfuckers. I, I, it's, it's nothing to be happy about in here. When you, when you, when you still a slave, we slaves, Mike. How you gonna be a happy slave, bro? Mm. It don't yeah. make sense. Yeah, it's too much work to be done. Um, and I sometimes I, I lose track of what my, but you had a line in the song where you talked about you was wandering through the streets looking for your dad. Is that true? Yeah, that's true, Mike. Mike. I'm a truth teller, bro. Everything I say, I'm I'm not playing. I'm not playing, and I try my hardest not to exaggerate nothing. I really was. Back in them days, it was they were sniffing, and the, and the crack and the crack was heavy, and pops wasn't home. You know, it was the home was broken, and I used to walk around all these blocks of Jefferson where he used to hang at, looking for him. Facts. You ever find them when you was out there looking for them? Of, of course, of course. I I see them. He used to come looking for me too. Don't get it twisted. I'm just saying what it is. He came looking for you. Why? Because my my dad is a great, he's a good man, great man. Hmm. He he was a young man, like same thing with a, with a lot of brothers right now. They don't, they're not in the home, but sometime in their life they might a switch gonna go off and they be like, damn, I need to. See what's going on with my kids, you know, and double back and get that relationship right, you know. And how is that relationship between you and your father now? We not the best of friends, mm -hmm. but we um, but we best friends. Does that make any sense? Yeah. We speak not as much as we should. It's been a minute since I spoke to him, but. He with me every day. We so much alike. We thinkers. We loners. You know, we love hard. We we don't trust a lot of people. We just alike. You know what I mean? So when I do speak to him, it's, it's like I just spoke to him yesterday. Do you have you have children of your own? No kids, man. Is there is that on purpose? Uh. Everything is God's will. I don't do nothing. I feel like you're one of those names that people sort of know about, but you're swimming in this ocean of a thousand MCs trying to get some light. Uh, no question that you are of the upper echelon of spitters. How do you feel about your current place in the game in terms of like people knowing your name, respectability, all that kind of stuff? I don't actually think much about it. <clears throat> All I can, all I'm really focused on is um learning the independent game so I can continue to um do what I want to do. I could care less about who knows me, or who speak on me, and who don't, because I don't think no nobody better than me. Honestly. Yeah. And I'm not and and with saying that, I'm not even here for that. You see what I rap about? I rap about what I want to rap about. Right. I'm not trying to be the super lyrical. I'm not trying to be the toughest. I'm not trying to be the coolest or nothing. I'm, I'm what they call one of them woke, them woke niggas, I guess, or conscious. When conscious means we are conscious, we are breathing, right? So mm -hmm. that don't even make sense to me. But mm -hmm. however you want to paint it, that's cool with me. I deal with the ones who deal with me. There's certain brothers who reach out and deal with me, and we kick it, like Jamal Gasol, peace to Jamal, peace to Jamal like Gasol, like she. Yeah. You know, certain dudes, man. And I'm cool with that. My brother Black G's. I I I, I deal with real ones, man. Listen. Genuine. Can I just say this? Because you one of these dudes too. And you here right now, and I be having a problem going on um IG and saying what I what I feel sometimes. And I pull back. And this has happened with you, Rashid Banks. And geez, 
I, I wanted to say, post a picture and say, I love street justice. I just don't know how people are going to take it. I'll say it now. I love street justice. I love you. I love what you do. Listen, I love black cheese. I just, okay. So I had to say that. Now it's on video. I don't got to post it on IG. Let's just say it with it. I love black G's. No doubt. Like, honestly, man, and you, I, I feel the same way about you. Like, I, I will be, you know, I do casual listening shit from time to time. I'm sitting around YouTube, I'm on the couch. I'm like, you know, YouTube will give you a suggestion based on other shit that you already been listening to. And you will pop up. It's right. like, I see the see tree justice. I got to click it. Like, yo, I listen to it and I just get, um, edified on the inside it does something for my soul it's not just music um and so for that reason you hear i can say i love you for doing that thank you for pro providing um that to my life it's something that i needed i think a lot of other i think people don't know that they need it i think some people do know that they need it and they also appreciate what you do but what you do i need thank you for spitting thank you for not quitting thank you for not giving up um because i needed to hear you um on Hood Prayer, you say we act a fool on TV because they pay us. For real, they just trying to degrade us. Talk to me about that song and that specific line. The Hood Prayer. Hood Prayer. Incredible song. That beat, that beat, it really made me want to just talk crazy, right? But mm. once again, yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I found, I found the balance and I just spoke, I stuck to the topic I like. Talk about life. Mm -hmm. This is what's going on. All these, every everything you see, all this money, all this flashing money on IG, all this, and a week later that, that a rapper killed. This is, it's, it's just, it's, it's one game. They just, they just, we like puppets, bro. They playing with our life. They gonna get you on out here and give you a little light, get, put the camera in front of you, how you acting crazy to make money off of you, and you're dead. Or you're out of here, and they off to the next one. It's like, you, it's it's a game. It's just some one big. It's a big game that we need to stop playing. Period. And I'm just saying the hood prayer. I'm just praying. It's like I'm praying that niggas wake the fuck up. You know. Period. Really. On your IG, you make the statement that you are here to bring back integrity. Uh, talk to me about that because very few MCs cite that as a reason they do this is the integrity part paramount for you integrity is everything man mike i do this rap shit they gave me a microphone and i should have something real to say this is how i feel mm -hmm. i'm not getting the microphone to um get followers to follow me to destruction i got a microphone so now I'm a public speaker. I should have something very valuable to give to the listeners. Period. I'm not here to do the devil's work, man. Mm. Yeah. Um, what is it specifically you see in the game that you feel is lacking in integrity? Everything. The mind state is lacking integrity. Period. Mm. Mm -hmm. Every the whole way we think and move is is so ungodly and it's just so low level. We making all this money from this music, and all we care to do is show stacks and stacks of money on the camera and, and, and talk about having an op and fuck this dude, fuck that dude, we're gonna kill this dude, and you smoking on this dude. That is is just devilish. It's it's no integrity in none of that. Everything is about destruction. You get all this money and make it out just to kill yourself. It, it, it just don't make no sense to me. Um, we talked about a lot of deep subject uh, as your music lends itself to such a discussion. When, when we talk about these issues, we often find allies who are frustrated with the lack of answers um, and calls to action uh, to, to affect positive change. Uh, these issues are obviously very close to you. Do you have any answers to those things that plague our community or are you still searching like so many of us? 
I'm, I'm still searching, but I do, I know what the answer is, but <laughs> that's a whole different interview, bro. I don't want to get into that because I don't want to come off a certain way. But then again, that's a contradiction because I told you I'm not scared to say anything. But I, I wouldn't want to even put that on your platform like that. Well, you don't want to get too I, deep. It's, it's a longer conversation probably too, right? Yeah, and it's the one that nobody want to have because it's too, it's too real. We live in a world where we want to do what we want to do. We don't want to do nothing. No, we don't want to follow God's laws. Mm. I just say that. That's the answer. God's okay. laws is the answer. Period. Got you. God's laws. I respect that. Um, uh, what does 2021 look like for street justice? Hmm. As I said before, everything is God's will. So if it's willing for him this for me still to be around, we 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 probably gonna get two or three projects out of me. Cause like I said, I'm 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 doing my due diligence right now, and I'm getting my my my, my independent business savvy on, you know, trying to figure out the things that need to be done to make sure I'm able to put out content and monetize off of doing what I'm doing. Mm. So that's what type of time I'm on. Got you. Yo, um, thank you, Street Justice, for showing up. Uh, we're looking for a few projects coming out next year. Is This is Trust Gang. You know what I mean? Shout out to 38 Special. Again, if y'all haven't checked out the album, Community Service, go check that out immediately. Uh, Honor and Glory is a single. Um, give me the name of the other single that I'm forgetting right now with Shay. Don't Believe Him. You got Don't Without Overthrow. Right, an overthrow. Yes, these songs. Go check them out immediately after this interview. Uh, and once again, Street Justice, it was my honor, my absolute honor to have you on this platform. It was a long time coming. I'm glad we finally did it, brother. Much uh, blessings and success to you going forward, sir. Thank you. Hold on, let me give a shout out too. Let me shout out Hip Hop is Life. They've been rocking with me from the beginning, similar to you. As soon as you heard me, you was intrigued and wanted to see what I was about. Mm -hmm. They the ones who did the visual for the uh, overthrow video. It's beautiful. Yes, every word too on the screen. Yeah, yeah. They rock with me. I I, I, I respect them. I support them as well. You know, hip hop is life. Salute to you guys. Much respect. Thank you, and thank you, uh, Street Justice. Thank you. Yes, sir.